Okay, writing the thesis statement, I mean, let's face it here, this is the most important part of your essay because this is what gives you directions. So the beginning of any writing assignment needs to have a purpose, and the purpose is clearly stated. We're not going around in circles here. We're, we're directly stating the purpose of the writing assignment very early on in the paper. Now, I'm not saying that the thesis needs to be exactly the last line of the first paragraph. Obviously, if you have a longer type writing assignment, let's say you're doing a 10 or 15 page research paper, it might take you one, two, or even three paragraphs to present some background information and set up what's going to happen, and then you include your thesis. But in, it, no matter where it is, you need to make sure that you do have what I call a sharply focused thesis. Now, the thesis needs to be organized around the question. And it's very simple if you have an essay exam. If, if I asked you, you know, what are the qualities of a, a good roommate, in your thesis, you'll see the qualities of a good roommate are. And you'll state maybe three qualities. And then the rest of the paper goes on and explains why those qualities are important. So that's called restating the question. Now you can do that with some types of writing assignments, but you can't do it with others. For example, the summary, you're not, you, there's no way you can restate the question, but it, I'm asking you to summarize. So you have to ask yourself, okay, what is a summary? And then you say, well, Michael, a summary is when I explain what the writer's thesis is and the most important supporting points. But it, it, so with a summary, your thesis is easy. State the writer's thesis and then maybe three important points in the essay. That's it. And then spend the rest of the essay explaining why you think the writer's uh, main point is this and then explain the three points which support that main point. So that, that gives the essay a good organization to it. Now, uh, in this particular lesson, there's kind of three main things that you need to do in order to write a sharply focused thesis. Now, chances are you are not doing this, but it's easy once you understand how to do it. Number one is make sure that you read and decode the question or understand the question. Two create a short shopping list of ideas based on the key points of the question. And then three, restate the question in the form of a thesis while including three points from the shopping list. Now the shopping list, it, it's just, it's what I call an informal list of ideas that kind of organize what you're doing in your writing. Now for essay exams, you need to have a list. But you're saying, hey, Michael, you know, I don't have time to do a shopping list if I'm taking, for example, a TOEFL uh, uh, you know, essay exam. I have only 30 minutes or 20 minutes to answer the question. The list is going to take time away from a writing. But I say the answer is false to that because the list, it helps you limit your focus. It helps you organize what you need to do before you do it. So in the long run, creating the list or the informal outline is actually going to help you save time. Now let me give you another example of uh, something really fast and uh, to help illustrate what I'm talking about in this particular lesson. Now there's two kinds of people in the world. Now remember that when I'm teaching, sometimes I like to teach through analogy which means I like to compare something you're, that you're familiar with, maybe, to something you're not familiar with, which is the writing. Okay, you go to the grocery store to buy groceries, right? I mean, you gotta eat. Now, some people, when they go to the grocery store, they make two mistakes. Mistake number one is they go before eating, so they're hungry. Mistake number two is they have no list of what they need. So what do you think happens to that person? They're hungry, they have no list of what they need at the grocery store. What happens? Well, they buy too much. They buy things they don't need. Maybe they already have them at home or they buy things that are not simply good for them or not healthy for them. So they, they could get fat or they maybe could spend too much money. Now, let's go back to writing. So to prevent you from putting things into your writing which is not relevant or not necessary, the list helps you stay focused. It helps, it helps give you enough time to adequately develop the topic. 
So when you're making your list, how many details should you include? My own recommendation is that you need to include, uh, you need to write at three levels, three coherent layers of meaning, for example. You have a main idea, you have a support idea, and you have your sub-support ideas. That means you have your examples to support your topic sentences in your developmental paragraphs and the topic sentences kind of re-explain your thesis that you stated in the beginning of the writing. Am I making sense here? Think about that. Now a lot of students they forget that and when I'm reading your writing in the middle of your paragraph if you're still writing in generalizations you're not going to get a good, good score or if you begin your essay with details you're not going to get a good score because that's not how academic writing works typically we have the thesis in the beginning of the of, of the actual essay then we have a topic sentence in each paragraph and the topic sentence kind of states the main point of the paragraph and then you have the sub support ideas or the examples or details they help illustrate and explain the topic that you stated in the beginning so remember that main idea, support idea, and sub-support ideas there. So in this lesson I gave you some possible outlines of, of how you can actually organize at these three layers of meaning. So you obviously want to make sure that you've looked at some of those examples. And I think the main thing is is to make sure that before you start writing that you, you create your list and your list does focus on main ideas, support ideas, and then sub-support ideas. If, if you make your list focusing in those three different areas, I don't think you're going to have much trouble developing your topics for academic writing. So I gave you some examples in here that it's important for you to read newspapers in English, read books in English, read magazines in English. It helps you become more familiar with the culture of English. So you're familiar with customs and behaviors and issues and movies and singers, politicians and so on. And uh, if you're a better reader, you'll also be a better writer and it helps you think of ideas faster. Because I know when you're doing an essay exam, for example, that you don't have a lot of time and it helps if you have, if you're somewhat familiar with the topic uh, before you begin writing. Okay, so I think that covers pretty much everything that I want to say here to help you with this, but maybe the, the last thing I'll say here is make sure that when you're, when you're writing and you begin with your thesis and you, you start with your list and you begin writing down your list, make sure that it organizes very clearly around the writing prompt. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Let's go back to the example I used earlier about what are the qualities of a good roommate. So then, when you're writing your list, you might put uh, qualities of a good roommate. You might put number one, friendly. And then you might list two examples to help support why being friendly is an important quality. Uh, you go to your second quality is respectful. So number two you write down respectful and then you have example one, example two which show why respectful is an important quality in a good roommate. And uh, maybe you have one more idea. You might have um, fun how a, it's important that your roommate is fun. So your third support point would be fun and then you have two different examples underneath that which would help illustrate that idea. So once you have the list down, remember, you, you basically have your main idea, your three support points and two examples for each of those and now once you start writing, you're not just thinking about everything that comes into your head, you're focusing on the list that you put down. So that way you can narrow and focus your writing and you begin answering the question from the very first word that you start in your writing. Now remember that a very common problem for a lot of students is they do not directly answer the writing assignment, right? So they end up 
you know, they, they, they kind of answer it, but they don't directly answer it. And they don't do very well when they turn this paper in or if it's a TOEFL or some other essay type exam. They do terribly on that. And then they're scratching their head. Why? Why did it not do so, so well? I worked really hard. But remember the example I gave you. It's not how hard you work. It's being smart and making sure you directly address the writing task. And a shopping list is one way that can help you directly address the writing task.